Hello and welcome. In this video we'll be taking a look at version 1.4.6 of the IDF Mods Project F16i SUFA. So let's um, get into it. First off I can't recommend their Discord enough. Um, if you go to, I'll put the link in the description. Um, this is where you'll get um, notifications on updates, where to download from, um, any frequently asked questions, um, bugs and things like that. Um, just, just just to show you that um, there are uh, progress updates. I mean, they're they're even working on F16C um, conformal fuel tanks and tail add-ons now. Um, now that the the uh, Sufa uh, back seat has been completed to a point. Um, so yeah, uh, the project is really um, rolling forward at a, a good speed. Um, but yeah, as I say, the best place to get all the updates on what's going on is the Discord. So a link in that in the description. Um, this is also where, like I say, you can get the uh, download link from. But I'll also um, add that in the description, which will bring up this page here. Um, and then you just click download, which it will save to wherever you download to. And then um, it, the next part is just installation, really. Now, uh, I'm going to get into that um, in just a second. Um, but just know that um, they have um, set it up so that when you download the file, each um, part of the mod has, its, has an install and an uninstall. Um, so yeah, like I say, I'll get into that in a minute. Just be aware that this file is just over seven gigabytes in size. Um, they originally uploaded to Mediafire, which took six hours to download the file from. It's now on Google Drive, which will, uh, it took me like six or seven minutes. So big improvement there. So let's get into the installation. All right, so let's grab the raw file. Okay, there it is. Double click it, wait for the annoying purchase window to open up right so this is the main file broken down in five subcategories you've got the SUFA uh, Delilah Python 5 Spice 1000 and 2000 and then inside those is an install and an uninstall so if you're um, installing manually um, which I don't really recommend that much uh, as it can be a bit of a, a pain and can um, be annoying to repair um, and also just so you're aware this uh, this mod does break the integrity check so um, if you're wanting to use servers online you're not going to be able to if um, you've installed these manually um, well not straight away anyway but like I say um, you've got an install so what you would do is um, go into um, digital combat simulator main folder um, and as you can see the corresponding folders are inside and all you do is drag and drop that into here and it would install into the relevant parts um, and then if you want to get rid of it um, you drag and drop the uninstall folders in and that should overwrite anything and should in theory get you back to um, uh, vanilla f16 but I don't trust my ability in um, using files uh, to very high standards so I like to use a mod manager and I'm using JSGME uh, you can use OVGME I think it's called um, but I like to swap my mods out on the fly so that if I'm wanting to use an online server that uh, needs integrity check um, I can come out of DCS I can click on that click on uh, deactivate once that's across here I can close that go straight back into DCS and get straight into the server without any issues whereas with um, switching folders backwards and forwards you'd need to do uh, a DCS repair just to make sure everything's running properly as it may you must may still have some uh, lingering files in there and everything if you if you're not sure what you're doing so I can't recommend a mod manager enough so obviously if I click on Delilah that now when I boot up DCS the Delilah missile uh, will be in the um, 
inventory and just to make you aware of these four um, bits of weaponry they do replace um, stuff that's already in in the lists and it will be for the whole set of um, aircraft that use that weapon as well so with the Delilahs and Spice 1000s they replace the AGM 154A JSOs so if you have you can't have the Delilah or the Spice 1000 together you can either have one or the other um, but if you're wanting to use the AGM 154A you can't use either the Spice 1000 or the Delilah um, with the Python 5 um, that will uh, overwrite the AIM-9X and that will be for all aircraft again and with the um, SPICE 2000 um, that replaces the GBU-31V-3B JDAM GPS penetrator bomb so um, you sort of you can see why I would want to use a mod manager um, just simply because um, if I want to use certain weaponry um, I want to be able to change that quickly and get back in without wasting too much time fiddling about with files so i will put a link for the um, for js gme in the description uh probably also put a link in for the ov gme as well depending on which one you want to use um i may make a tutorial video on how to install that as well uh, because that can be a bit fiddly as well but um installing uh, you can either do it manually, like I say, f straight from the uh, RAR file or zip file, whatever you're using. Um, but that goes straight into the core folder. Um, and that's a folder I really don't like messing around with. Um, I don't mind using the um, uh, save game folder for mods and things. But when it comes to the core, core folder, uh, I like to keep that intact. So as you can see... Um, if we go back one, this is again in the core folder. What um, JS GME does is it creates a folder in there, uh, the external mods. And as you can see, I've got all the folders for everything that's in there that's active or unactivated um, so that uh, I can use them as and when. Anyway, so that's a bit on installation. So uh, let's get into the uh, sim proper now. Now, if the SUFU has installed properly, you'll see this icon down here. As you can see, I've set the wallpaper and click on it, set that, and it'll bring that as your background. Um, so yeah, that's gone in properly um, using my mod manager. Um, I have made some, well, I have taken some notes from the Discord just to let you know what, what's different about it. Um, so um, this was for version 1.4 but in the space of two days afterwards it went from 1.4 to 1.4.6 um, as far as I'm aware not much has changed here um, so I'll read this out to you so the F-16i has the custom cockpit with back seat and motor crew capability um, once you're in um, the actual SUFA I, I didn't actually realize that the whole thing was made from scratch I, I thought they were using the uh, Eagle Dynamics F-16 cockpit. They just changed the textures, but um, apparently not. Um, it's completely custom front and back cockpit. So um, I was impressed by that when I I've actually found out because it just proves that either I'm not very observant or they've done a really, really, really good job of it. And I would go with the second one because it is fantastic effort that they've done so far. Um, you've got 370 gallon empty option um, you've got modified flight model um, so they've tweaked it to make it more like the real SUFA Python 5 training version so now um, as well as a Cat 9M um, you can have the um, the Python 5 variant um, for simulation um, the uh, internal fuel is reduced to 5,700 pounds like the real thing weight and drag of the F-16i SUFA with conformal tanks lantern fuel tanks has been modified to be in real life um, so the fully loaded SUFA is now 53,000 pounds um, 775 uh, compared to the 43,000 uh, pounds main gear has uh, been modified uh, to heavyweight landing gear and uh, they've improved def they've drastically improved the brake the brakes so I will um, add that 
the Spice 1000 flight model has been fixed and the main gear attraction is now more accurate to the real thing and is faster. So um, that's just the notes of uh, the updated version. And then there's some uh, frequently asked questions that I thought I would bring to the fore um, just so that you know what's going on. Um, start up desync. So the pilot starts the plane as usual, the Wizzo performs an auto start. And that's um, when you're, I, I believe, uh, possibly as a multi crew. Um, in cockpit sync, desync, the MFD screens are desyncing. So the the if you're multi crewing, the front the, the pilot can be looking at his own systems, while the backseater can be looking at, uh, at his own or her own, which I think is fantastic. Um, real, real. Um, it brings more um, capability to the aircraft. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So um, uh, apart from that, everything else is synchronized with each other. The external model sync, um, the entire entire external model is in sync, including the wheels, flaps, air brakes, and afterburners. Um, the payload desync, if you start with the um, aircraft fully loaded, um, uh, before you get into the mission, uh, your wizzo will not see it. So when you're on the ground, it's best to have your aircraft with no loadout and then have the armory arm panel do the uh, bits and pieces so that both of you can see what's on the pylons. And the there's a fuel desync. Um, quite funny, I was reading in the Discord the other day um, that the pilot can fly the aircraft until nearly empty and then the wizard can take control uh, as there is no, uh, as it says, there's no uh, sync to the fuel system. So you've still got a full tank, of, uh, a full loadout of fuel in the back. So making really, really long missions is possible now um, just by switching who flies the aircraft, which uh, obviously will be taken care of at a later date, but there is that to look out for. So that's the frequently asked questions out of the way. Let's finally get into the uh, the aircraft. So we're in the configuration panel. Um, obviously, there's the SIFA there. Um, now, one thing that they have added in the latest update between 1.4 and 1.6 is the ability to have uh, the SIFA with or without conformal fuel tanks. So at the moment, you, you can't take off the fuel tanks uh, as and when you want to. So now that they've given you an option of either squadron livery with or without, which is good, uh, just in case you don't want to, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it includes a drag factor if you actually have that on there, um, even without fuel in in the tank. I, I, I don't know if there is any drag penalty with that, but there is now the option with no, no CFTs. So that, that's a nice option there. Um, you still get the um, option of uh, covers uh, for if you've got um, the spice missiles uh, loaded or not. Um, so I will show you those when I have a, uh, a missile uh, loaded. So we've just remove that for now. And it, the same goes with the um, pythons as well. If you're carrying python fives. Uh, and it comes an option to have them covered and also the remove before flight tags so if i do the remove before flight without target pod and lantern there we go we can start on the ground with all covers on it just adds a little bit more um i suppose realism uh for any squadron virtual squadron that want to start with uh, proper ground procedures and then uh, obviously with, it wouldn't be correct without the crew ladders. So yeah, you can start with ladders and then ask the rearm, rearm, uh, rearm and refuel panel to remove all the covers and ladders before start up and all that sort of stuff. Um, also, you have the option of having the ALQ184 ECM pod but as it's in t uh, carried internally, it, you won't see any difference. So I would automatically um, have that 
as standard obviously because it's built into the spine of the aircraft and it's not the ALQ um, 184 it's a uh, home built Israeli equipment in the in the tail, tail uh, spine there so um, yeah uh, that should really be um, there as standard I would have thought um, so yeah let's load some weapons onto the aircraft so I've gone and uh, into my mod manager and I've in installed the Python 5s, the Spice 1000, the Spice 2000. Um, so and another thing just to add on the installation part there, if you do either way of either manually or with a mod manager, make sure you install the Suffer first and then the weapons after. And then if you uninstall, you uninstall with the weapons first and then the Suffer last. Um, just, just so that you end up with a clean um, a clean set of files afterwards so let's go with python 5s so we'll go with python 5 on the outer pylons as you can see the aim 9x isn't there because the python 5 has gone over that um we come into here put on another python 5 and we go to here another python 5 so fully armed with those and then we can go we go to bombs and the spice 2000 will not be named spice 2000 for some reason it will still have gbu 31 uh, v 3b jdam but you'll notice that the icon is slightly different and there you go that's the spice 2000 or you can go to um air to ground missiles and you'll see that spice 1000 is under that Spice 1000 is a glide bomb, um, so it can be launched. I've launched from like 10 miles out, um, and it will glide and be on its merry way uh, following the laser. Um, and the Spice 2000 is just like your average um, JDAM, I, I, would, I suppose. It, it has the same sort of flight dynamics. Um, so, yeah, um, those are the two spice uh, munitions and python 5s and uh, like i say if you go to python 5 covers um, we can apply covers to to an eight and again covers there wingtip options don't seem to be um be there at all and then you've got your, your spice 2000 covers for seven and there you go you've got a cover for spice 2000 so yeah you've got all those bits and pieces that have been added for anyone who likes the real immersion of it all um and then you can go into fuel tanks and you can i don't think this will add um or take away the uh good formal fuel tank obviously you need to go into the option over here but the um the fuel tanks can be added as well so and also to add fuel to those fuel, the cfts that are already on there um so that now we have fuel inside that and uh, we now have our fuel tank so yeah um that's basically it with the weaponry um next i'll show you the um the cockpits um i won't be doing any flying in it as it's no different really to the f-16 uh, there are power differences and things like that but i'll leave that to you for you to uh, sort of discover for yourself um but yeah again with these weapons options um i may show you the delilah missile actually before we move on to the cockpits but the weapons options are really good um they all have their own uh flight parameters um so they fly differently to the the things that they've um overwritten so um it's not just um a jdam dressed up as a, a spice 2000 it is its own uh, entity um it's just been uh, uh, just overwriting a, an existing munition that's in the library so yeah uh, that's where the munitions i'll show you the um delilah quickly before we move on to um cockpits
Just a quick addendum for the SUFA, I forgot to mention for pylons 5R, 5 and 5L. On 5R you can have the lightning pod and that works exactly the same as the normal lightning pod for the F16. On 5L you can have the um, low altitude navigation and targeting infrared for night or lantern pod. Um, unfortunately that's just aesthetic, um, it doesn't actually function at all. And then on the um, central central pylon you can have the ANAXQ14 data link pod. So um, you can really fill this aircraft up which is nice. Sorry about the jump cut there, like I said before that I had to leave the simulator to replace the Spice 1000 with the Delilah. Um, so if we go to pylon 7, go to air ground missile, I've got the Delilah there. Um, so this is the um, cruise missile loitering munition. Um, it's got an operational range of around 150 miles and is subsonic, flies around 0.85 Mach um, and can fly to an altitude of 28,000 feet. Um, obviously these aren't official numbers, these are what are just spread on the internet. But um, yeah, its uh, guidance is um, CCD IIR with GPS INS, so um, quite a capable bit of kit. And like I say, um, you've got the choice of three weapons on that pylon, so you've got the Delilah. You've got the Spice 1000, which um, is just an add-on kit for the um, uh, Mark 83. And... Um, it has the um, obviously the late later um, guidance, and then, uh, then you've got the AGM 154A, which is the JSO um, for that um, section. And then obviously uh, I've swapped out the um, uh, Spice 2000, and we now have, uh, as you can see, the the uh, icon has changed for the JDAM. So that's just now the JDAM on the wing. Um, so yeah, like I say, it's just a pick and mix really of what what you want, mission planning, what munitions you want, and then swap out as and when, which is why these uh, mod managers are so good. Now, um, that's it for configuration on the the Sufa, but there was a bit of a bonus um, addition to the. Uh, to the mod and that is the F-16C Barak and it is its own aircraft it doesn't fall under the F-16 um, CM Block 50 uh, or the SUFA so you will need to go in and assign um, controls for it flies exactly the same as the SUFA does um, and will have the same key bindings except you can change the tail units at the base of the tail which is like the ECM section um, you've got choice of tail 1 or tail 2 um, basically, uh, basically it's just uh, a similar variation on the F-16C uh, that the Norwegians have but they have parachutes in the tail of theirs um, adding the ALQ-84 there and then there's the little extra addition here of um, light extensions from the air intakes which uh, are rumoured to carry electronics of some kind you've got it underneath the uh, on the chin there as well um, I think that's part of the no that's part of the maybe the tail section yeah so it's just adding different um, external mods um, nothing internal will change unless you add the ECM and the lights and stuff so um, but yeah very nice aircraft uh, to fly it comes with uh, two choices of um, the same livery um, but yeah um, that came as a I didn't even realize that the Barak had actually become part of the mod so that was quite a nice surprise and again this can carry the same as what the um, the Sufa can uh, stick a De Delilah onto it um, it does the job just as well um, it's just that you're using your own uh, initiative instead of having 
a wizzo and the um, internal cockpit of that is just the uh, the standard uh, Eagle Dynamics F16 um, so it's not worth showing you that part of it if you get the mod you can obviously see for yourself but it's just the same as the F16 uh, as standard so we'll jump into the Sufa cockpit now and I'll show you the front and back right so we're in the hangar now um, as you can see fully loaded inside um, look, it really does look good beast of an aircraft um, so let's jump in okay so now we're in the pit and looking around as you can see it looks you can see why I confused it for being just a retextured version of the Eagle Dynamics cockpit but fully custom um, obviously the RWR, RWR over here in the corner is uh, quite different with uh, buttons either side they're not clickable at the moment um, I was expecting Hebrew um, but that doesn't seem to be the case we've got green red satin sack so that replaces uh, com1 com2 and the uh, list which brings up on the uh, DED there startup sequence is exactly the same as the Eagle Dynamics F16 as obviously this is just a an addition to that so no changes there at all and um, if we get it fired up I can show you some of the uh, functionality inside so um, let's just uh, get this started very quickly um, so you can see get the, uh, the start going as that builds up we'll get the external lighting on uh, uh, the radio doesn't work at the moment no matter what you do with it I can't seem to get it to function so there is that um, not quite built up enough RPMs there stick the landing light taxi no, actually stick the landing um, put the parking brake on ok so we can shift home now get the engine revved up zero out the altimeter Okay, all good to go. Close the canopy. Okay, lock it down. Start the RWR and put the counter measure suite on. Okay, and we get the ECM on standby, function 2. And there we go, we're done with that side. Oh, on the seat. Okay, all good. Alright, let's come over to this side. Um, now, you weren't able to reach these buttons originally, but um, you, you used the, the uh, control column would appear and disappear when you tried to click it. But I'm glad that that's been amended now because now we can actually get to the systems. Um, we'll get the all the switches on, Elvids on, put the INS into stored heading. As you can see, the RWR has come online. It's just the surroundings that are different. Um, let's bring up the HUD and the helmet mounted queuing system okay so that's all good just wait for that to line up once everything's all up and running I'll jump in the back seat um, if they want to know how to jump in and out of the back seat uh, pilot seat 9 key wizzo seat is 0 key along the top So everything's all clickable, as you'd expect. Um, like I say, there's just a few changes that are a little bit different. And uh, the radio, yeah, whether you start hot on the ground or uh, cold, you can't get anything up on the radio. So, come 
on, hurry up. Air to ground, power up the Delilahs. Okay, and we're ready to get into nav mode. Okay, so we're going to press the zero key and we're now in the Wizzo seat. As you can tell we're slightly closer to the air intake so it's a little bit noisier to be expected. Um, as you can see up here we have the um, the HUD uh, there. Uh, I believe you should be able to see uh, a sort of a video layout. Um, I think that might be an addition that's coming. I'm not 100% sure on that one so don't, uh, don't uh, quote me on that. Got the DED down the bottom there. Um, your scratch pad for your UFC is over to the side there. All your normal um, RPM gauges, uh, temperature gauges, and things are here as standard. Um, and then everything in between the legs, uh, as you as you can see, you can just flick through different modes. Everything's clickable. Um, really done a fantastic job. Uh, you've got warning lights across the top there. Noticeable steering, if I put that on, is lit up in there. Um, obviously, you've got the chevron up because we are not pointing in the right direction. Obviously, we should be going up. Um, you, one thing I did think was odd is that you can't control the countermeasure sweep from the back. Um, I've not seen, I've tried hunting for backseat photos of either the Sufa or the, the D variant and they're very few and far between and from what I've found this is the exact replica um, of that um, see the throttle and your stick movements there everything is good um, got your uh, oxygen systems there noticeable steering which not clickable and you've got these that are not clickable but apart from that pretty much is everything is the same as it would be in the normal F16 so yeah I mean it seems a bit limited in the back um, I'm guessing I, I know the Israelis are very sort of secretive about their military systems so we're never going to get a, a full picture of what the insides like and what the systems are like but this being as close as it can possibly be there I think they've done fantastic and flying in the back is well it's a bit of a task obviously you've got big uh, what looks like a CRT in front of you uh, one of the old television sets but um, but yeah it's it's really good I mean, the only things that I can really point out that are a little bit off is the uh, just aesthetic things like the um, the data on there is slightly skewed. I don't know if that's actually like that skewed inside the box there or what, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's um, that's it for the sofa. Um, I hope you've uh, this has given you a good insight into the mod and um, go out there and get it. Give it a good go. It's it's brilliant, brilliant mod. Um, they are head and the IDF pro uh, mods projects are head and shoulders above everyone else at the moment. They really are um, setting a standard. So um, yeah, go go download it and try it for yourself. Anyway, if you got this far, thank you very much. And uh, as always, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.